Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome aboard. I just wanted to start by saying I'm really excited to share with you my art space. So if you don't know, uh, every Magma ambassador has their art space. And so I want to start off by introducing you to what I have here. Um, so what, let's have you guys uh, fully see everything that's going on. So on the left here, I have a community board. So you guys can like go ahead and draw. Um, and I have a still life section because last time we were doing still lives. Um, I have portraits and we're going to be doing a portrait today. So I, I have our canvas here. It's, it's public. You can go click on it. And I do have a link that I can share with everyone. Uh, but you do have to join the art space to actually like get on the canvas. So I just want you guys to understand like how this works, right? Um, on the left here, the three last areas here are video areas. And here you can see all my classroom videos, uh, time-lapse videos from my own YouTube channel, and then every appearance that I make on the Magma Clubhouse Live. So that I would just share that with you guys because it's a little corner of the internet that, that I've gotten the opportunity to design and have fun organizing. And uh, if you know me, I love to name all my layers and have just the most organized structure that I can. Uh, so I thought I would show you guys this. Okay. Um, so I'm going to head on into our canvas for today. And you'll notice it's it's kind of a little bit different. Like normally, uh, we'll go on a canvas and it's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's like a, a long board type of a thing. And it is always super awesome. And uh, I, I just thought I'd change it up. Like, let's do something different today. Let's venture into something totally new. So... What I wanted to do today is start a study. Now, I have been very, very fortunate to run into uh, and kind of be influenced by somebody called Howard Lyon. If you don't know who this person is, uh, let me just get his information out here. <laughs> um. Howard Lyon is responsible for some of the my favorite book covers and he does wonderful oil painting and he also does reference photography and if you've ever tried looking for reference photography online it's like the most difficult thing to try and and get right because a lot of photographers they make beautiful photography but if you've got an artist taking photographs of people they just do it better like <laughs> i don't know how to explain this but these are amazing reference images and so you can i think he sells them like on his art station he sells them you can find a link through his instagram you can find him on patreon it's really really awesome um so here let me drop a link <laughs> trying to do this quickly hold on uh -uh. establishing house for a minute <laughs> i do have the image we're going to be working on and i will be giving you guys a drop link to that in just a few seconds so here is uh howard lyon's instagram i put that in the youtube chat um here is his patreon to look at and i'm not like paid to promote anybody this is just something that i love and that i'm super excited by when I saw his reference packs, I, to tell you the least, I, I there were many gasping occasions of inspiration, and I was so just like, I, I need to do these, right? So subsequently, I DM'd the guy, and I asked permission, and he said, yeah, absolutely, go ahead. So this is happening, and it's, it's, it's going to be really awesome. So from there... I guess let's let's get on started. Let's look at this. So when I'm starting a new canvas, what I am doing is thinking of the aspect ratio that I need. So as of right now, uh, you can't really change the aspect ratio of your canvas once you make it in Magma. Um, so I'll go. So if we go back to my uh, my art space, let's say I want to make like a new canvas. I'll go over here and I'll make like custom drawing. They do have ones that are already established. Um, 
but you can just make a custom drawing. So you'll name it. Um, and I'll just name mine PB and J damage. Um, and then here's the aspect ratio. And then you have your like background color, right? You have your rev resolution. Now, one of the ways that I like to operate here is I like to actually pick a higher aspect ratio. Like I'll pick higher numbers for this. Now, this is difficult when you have an iPad or if you're doing this on your phone, it might lag you. But if you're on a computer and you've got like good enough RAM, you're going to find this more pleasant to work in because it's going to have more pixels in the image. So you're going to be able to put in more detail. And I like to do that. So the canvas that I have uh, right now that we're about to paint on, just know it is a higher resolution. So if you're on an iPad, consider switching to your PC if you have one. If, if you are on your iPad, I'd love to hear from you. Let's see if this canvas is laggy at all for you. Um, if it isn't, I want to know that too, because that, that means I can do more of this kind of stuff. Uh, my goal here is to try and push the limits of what Magma can do uh, in terms of illustration and study. So you would put a higher aspect ratio here and you can look up online, like which, which sizes or how many pixels and then math it out. That's fine. Um, I like to start on a gray canvas because it gives you the opportunity to go up or down in value. So I always go gray. No, it avoids like white page syndrome too. That's really nice. Um, and then, hold on here. And then I like to put my resolution up to 300. Right. So that's just the basics of how I would start my, my image. Now, a lot, of, a lot of you are like, we, we know this, Anya, why are you going through this? But like, if you've never heard this, you might be very surprised to find out these are little tips and tricks. Now, uh, the art piece of the week, uh, I actually directed that piece. And a lot of people were like, I could never. I think you can. I think you absolutely can. Some of the uh, default canvas sizes are there because they allow for a better user experience. So they're smaller in order to make sure that you don't lag. But if you're dedicated to getting like a better image, it may be worthwhile to look at your aspect ratio and the size of your image. Just make that bigger. Make it bigger. You'll have more bandwidth to add more enriched detail, right? So just think about that. I, I mean, <laughs> it, it is really fun to think about. So I have this aspect ratio here. I believe it is around twice the size of what you would normally have. So probably the aspect ratio of the normal canvas that we're on is usually somewhere around here. Uh, and I made it vertical, right? I made it bigger. Here, let me color that in just for the sake of showing you guys how big it normally is, probably around this. And then we'll have it like this, right? We'll all be painting on it like this. But it is actually still that size. Um, so for me to make it larger like this will allow us to have more space to really work and have more detail if we so choose. All right. So today I figured we would start by focusing on the portrait aspect uh, of the illustration that I have picked out. Now, uh, we're about to reveal illustration I want to do. So this is the wonderful, the beautiful Nadia. So she is super, super pretty and Howard Lyon, uh, photographed her. She has her own entire pack that you can go and purchase. But I singled out this image um, because to me that is just gorgeously posed and there's some very clear lights and darks in this image and it inspires me greatly. So she has a beautiful face um, and I really thought, hey, let's go in there. Let's go in there and do the portrait, right? So I will drop a, a link to this file Give me one moment here. I will drop it in the in the messaging here inside Magma. So if you want to come and paint with me, uh, go ahead and and follow the art space links. Follow. Oh hi, Wens. <laughs> oh, Frank's here too. Awesome. Um, here, let me 
me get you guys my art space link over on YouTube. Here we go. My art space link. You can join the art space. And then I showed you guys how to get to the canvas, but if you weren't there for that, let me go ahead and grab you the canvas link. It's in the description of the, the YouTube video as well, but you know, I just thought it'd be uh, serviceable right now and just get it out there. But that, yeah, so you have your reference image in the chat of the board. So if you want the reference for what we're about to paint, you need to head to the board, right? So I'm gonna let you guys take your time, come on in at your own pace, do your thing. Um, Yeah, Ben's is here. So I, I do want to talk a little bit more about the illustration of the week. Like I was I was really happy that um the the group of, of people that I work with got featured. Like this is so cool. And Vence is a part of that group and, and we had so much fun that day making that illustration. And I think what I was where I was getting there is if you have like a bigger aspect ratio, you're allowing people to add more detail onto all of these things. And you absolutely can paint that way. So I was seeing comments like, oh, I could never, like, yes, you can. And it just takes time and effort, but you absolutely can. Uh, here, let me let me go approve, you guys. Approved. You guys can pick a canvas and go on in. And you could start without me because, oh, I have spoilers. <laughs> I already started to work. So I just want to put that out there. Mine is over here. Um, Mine is over here, and I have it's not showing up. Give me a minute. Hmm. We'll, we'll give it a second. Maybe it's just, oh, okay. I see what happened. Here we go. So I have my sketch here. Um, I did this ahead of time. That way I could kind of like talk during the beginning. And this is kind of where I want to be. And when I start putting in uh, my portrait, what I'll do is I'll first establish some lights and darks over the whole figure. And then we'll go right on in and we'll zoom in and we'll focus on just that portrait. Now we're just going to start it today. We're not going to bring it to completion. But my goal is that throughout the weeks that I'm doing classrooms, we're going to return to this image and we're going to continue working on it. So just know if you've been approved on a canvas, I see that uh, I'm not sure how to say your whole name, but Adorable Bunny is the last part of your name. You're on the first canvas. If you go to the third canvas, that one's free. You can have that one. Uh, just note that the people that have been approved on the canvas, you'll be able to return to that canvas, right? Um, that's why I'm dealing with the permissions today and making sure that uh, only the people that are approved can come back. Um, and we'll we'll make space as the weeks go go on um, if people want it. <laughs> Events is already going, going to town. <laughs> I love it. I love it, you guys. Go ahead and start your sketches because we're going to get to portraiture. And speaking of portraiture, <laughs> I just, I need to give a shout out because um, I was always okay at portraiture. Like you can look up my Instagram, like scroll all the way down at the bottom. These are portraits that I've done on my own. But but really after taking the Expressive Portraits course uh, on Schoolism by Jonathan Hardesty was when I really turned a corner to really make portraiture that for me at least was so much better and the approach that I'm going to take today you can learn there um, so definitely check him out he's another one of the magma ambassadors he had a classroom yesterday so if you miss that you know that's your loss because <laughs> clearly it would have been really fun uh, so let me put I'll actually put his Instagram and I will put his website up in the YouTube <laughs> let me do that and his website yeah so I, I could always do like okay portraiture but really the approach that I was taught in that class just kind of blew my mind right so yeah 
<laughs> that's all I have to say about that. It's just it's just amazing. You have to go see it. Um. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm just going to call you Adorable Bunny. If, if that offends you or if that's wrong, let me know. Um, let me know what you want to be called. But hello. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I see somebody else coming in. Andy. Awesome. Go find yourself a board. Get started. Um, so basically what I did here, um, I have a sketch layer. It's set to multiply. So I just sketched out uh, my illustration, the figure, just a rough sketch. I did not need something super fancy. I just wanted something that accurately represented the proportions according to my vision, right? Uh, and everyone can be different. Like if you want to exaggerate it, <laughs> I would be offended by being called adorable bunny. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to exaggerate proportions, if you want to make the head like super huge, I don't know. Do what you want to do. Um, I'm sure that you know, what? whatever you want to do is going to show up and be super cool. So, right. Okay, so what I did, so yeah, my sketch layer is on multiply. And then underneath that, I have my background layer. And the reason that my sketch layer is on multiply is so that no matter how dark my background here gets, my sketch will always be viewed on top of it, unless both values are black, of course. Okay, so I'm just gonna make, by the way, if you don't have this tool, this tool right here, it's like staying in front, even if I'm clicking into magma, it's not part of magma. Um, so this is called pure ref. And uh, if you don't have this and you're an artist, let me just blow your mind. So pure ref <laughs> is a program that is free. You can just go get it online and you can set it. It's like right click, canvas and there's there's a setting somewhere I forget it I did it so long ago but there's a setting where you can set it to always be on top of anything you click into so it'll always be there right and you can do a variety of things with this you can just you can just copy paste images in here and have make a huge mood board all of those things and save it to one um, document and then you can have that you know wherever you need to have it for your illustration. I really like it. You can like change the sizing of it, which I'm about to do because I couldn't see the uh I couldn't see the chat down there. So um just gonna have my reference right there. And then I'm gonna move my illustration right over here, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, and he says it is the reference tool. Yeah, it is. It really is. So if you don't have this and you've never heard of this, run, don't walk. <laughs> it is awesome. Uh, so yeah, definitely. I sing the praises of this reference tool and gladly because, yeah, who wouldn't? Um, store all the references and zoom in. <laughs> Ryan mentioned it a while back. Nice. Good for him. Yeah, almost every, like, anyone who does art a lot just definitely knows of this. But just in case you're new, uh, yeah, this thing is awesome. <laughs> Go get it. Um, okay. So, is it okay if I draw something else? Right, I have no problem with you drawing something else. I think the only thing, um, and, okay, hold on. Frank, uh, where's the reference file? Scroll all the way up in this chat. It's the first thing uh, that I have said in this chat. So, Adorable Bunny, what I would say is, so long as it is something that you can show your niece, I'm totally fine with that. I think that speaks for itself, right? Right. Okay. So, yeah, let's head on in. <laughs> I'm actually going to start painting now. I think we're ready. So we're actually, I'm going to put on some music. We're going to start chilling. <laughs> oh, hello, Freedom Phantom. Okay. How about creatures? Well, listen, listen, I, I'm not going to get upset if anybody doesn't want to follow like what I'm doing. 
but also it would be nice. <laughs> so, you know, yes, so long as it's clean, so long as you would show your niece, you know, you're not having like issues. But I don't have to, I don't want to have to police you guys is what I'm saying. I'm I'm more than happy to come out here and see um see your illustrations. They might get moved. So week by week as I do this, if your canvas has nothing to do with the reference, I'm going to assume you don't want to continue in the future weeks on the same one. So when you come like, let's say in two weeks, you'll, you can grab a fresh canvas and just doodle, right? That's fine. I have nothing against that. But the people who are drawing what I'm drawing, their canvas will stay. Like I will let them continue during the next session. I think that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, okay. So continuing the trend of if you're new to magma, uh, over here on the right, we have brushes and layers. Now, when you first start this, it's going to kind of look, it's, it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to look like this. It's going to look like this, right? Right. Here's how I get what I get, right? I have all these layers on the right side. And that's, that's fine, but I don't like how right here, I can't really see any of my brushes. Like there's this little toggle here that I can open, but I want to see everything in one go. I, I'm, I'm a multiple screen girly, so I like, to, <laughs> I like to see all the things, uh, very visual. So I like to put two columns and that opens up right away. I, I can see my layers on this side. I have all the brushes that are available um over on this side and then i can put full mode or advanced mode but i like full mode because i just have all the things and then i can establish all of the brushes that i want and i'm kind of odd i like to switch them up a lot um i love using the hard brush so let me start a new layer i like using the hard brush i don't use it like it comes out it will come out like it'll come out like this it'll be like a liner type of thing uh let me give you the reference file again no problem so yeah the it, it'll come out like that and you'll notice i have like no way of making it less opaque right and so a lot of people are like we can't paint on magma not true <laughs> You absolutely can. Um, and I'm, you know, most of you have probably figured it out by now, but you can go density. And I like to click the size off. And then I keep my spacing down here much lower. I, what spacing is, is, spacing, if it's super high, you're going to see this kind of stuff happening. Whoa. If you don't know how brushes work digitally, it's just a stamp that repeats itself over and over. So, your spacing controls that stamp and the rapidity at which it like will put put itself down as you put your strokes in. So if you are spacing way down, it does my favorite thing, which is butter smooth. Let's go. Um, so for me, that is like top notch. A lot of different people have different approaches. They have different preferences. Um, so do hear all of the other magma ambassadors out there and, and what their preferences are. I'm excited to see if they approach the topic. Um, perfect. Is that, does everyone have the reference? We're doing good. <laughs> I'm just wanting to hear from you guys how it's going. Right. Um, so definitely like shoot me a message in the board chat or in the YouTube chat, if you're having any issues whatsoever, but preferably the board chat, because then I can see it better as I'm painting. Um, <clears throat> I'm aware I'm a little bit ahead of the, the wheel here because some people didn't get their references. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep talking here. Um, so now that, now that you've established like your first brush, right? Uh, you can go and you can like have fun with these like other brushes. Hold on, let me bring that back. I'll just erase, <laughs> erase the whole board. And then we're gonna have fun with some brushes, just play around with them. Look like, ooh, canvas texture, you know what I mean? But but you can do the same thing that I was talking about, just like bring the density up and the size out. 
the spacing is down good and just do this look at look at now when it comes in when i'm soft it does this kind of a thing but if if i press hard it goes full opacity so it's a good way to like go in and add texture on things so you can play with all these brushes and these settings quite easily um and you can you can figure out like how you want your paintings to look you can work on on that skill so i just want to inspire you guys to like play around a, a lot of creativity and and art is play it's play essentially it's your trying something new and figuring out if it works you're testing you're prodding you're grabbing a stick from outside and poking your friend with it you know like <laughs> Try all these brushes. I mean, when they came out to free users, I was ecstatic. And um, sadly, I, I very often just stick to like the round brush. <laughs> oh, I see someone new. Here we go, Mars, hello. So I'm gonna approve you for your own canvas. Nice. I hope you have a good time. <laughs> hello, Mars. <laughs> okay. So. Hard to draw people for me as I always draw creatures. Currently doing anatomy. Me too, Andy. Me too. <laughs> you can't see the link for the... Yep, that's totally fine. I will post it again. <laughs> that's totally okay. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, okay. So I'm going to start putting in lights and darks. And the way I'm going to approach that is I'm just going to make a new layer on top of all that I have right now. And I'm, I'm going to look at this red color. It's not, I want you to look at this with me. It's not like, like fire engine red. Hold up, I can't paint. <laughs> Give me a minute. Uh, there we go. So it's not fire engine red. And it's definitely not like in the orange category, right? If we look at that, that's a, like it almost in the pinks. Like it's it's kind of this color. But that's not the right value, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it all the way kind of down. And I'm looking into the shadows as well. The shadows are, a, from what I see, a little bit cooler, which is why I'm going further into the pinks. So I'm going to grab my shadow color and I'm going to make it this. It's like a wine color, right? So that's kind of how I approach, like, okay, what color am I going to pick? I start with the color. And then I think of like which value I'm going to grab. <laughs> Trusty circle technique helps. Yeah, definitely go to your the circle brush. That's what you're saying. It is a good brush. Anyone who says like, oh, I can't render with the circle brush. You can and you will learn so much from doing so. It is ridiculous. Um, Creativity, like I love talking about the subject. Creativity thrives in constraint. Like I love working with like limited palettes. I love figuring out like, okay, I'm only going to do things in like, uh, like a higher set of values or I'm only going to use like two colors or, you know, <laughs> I'm going around saying the same things, but I digress. Let's start putting in our shadows. I'm actually going to go between the sketch layer and the background. So I'm looking here and I'm not going to be drawing any details. I am, that's not dark enough. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So I'm not going to be drawing in any details. I am simply looking for, hey, what are the like biggest shadow shapes? <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. You're like, Anya, you said this was a portrait demo. What are you doing? Uh, so I'm, I'm just gonna establish shadows around the entire general form, and then we're gonna go in. It just kind of helps to 
ground the image to begin with. Um, so there's this big shadow like in this area. And I'm not going nearly as dark uh, as I should, but I like to preserve those super, super darks. I really like to hold back until I'm ready, like right at the end to just really give it because I have a tendency to like over. I'll overdo the contrast, so I like to hold back. Um, go in and add my shadows. Let's get some music going. Let's do that, shall we? <laughs> it might be a little abrupt. We're going to start with retro. Okay. This is how you would start the portrait too. A lot of art like kind of goes hand in hand. The method is a lot the same. I'm gonna be doing this in the face as well. I'm gonna start with the shadow shapes. So when you're looking at shadow shapes, you wanna try to group them. So I see like the big shapes that I'm hitting here. I'm not going in for detail. I'm just going in for like, okay, where are the biggest shadow shapes? Oh, Andy, you need to study folds and clothes. Same. <laughs> this is this is also an excuse for me to learn, by the way. Um, the draperies, it's it's like you have to master those edges, the edges on things, like whether it's like hard or like super soft. You have to just like nail that. And it's it's a lot of observation. It's gonna be wild. We're gonna head into it um, at some point with this image specifically. Can't wait. Oh, cool. Nice.
So this is kind of an underpainting. Like this chair is not like pinkish purple, right? But what's cool about painting it this way is at some point I'm gonna correct it and paint it like probably somewhere near black. The richness of that color that I put underneath will kind of show in some spots. And subconsciously at least, a lot of the difference between paintings that have color vibrancy and paintings that don't are paintings who have this type of idea behind them, where you have colors coming through underneath, really. Painting and talking is interesting. It's like um, the difference. I guess what I'm trying to say is like chewing, chewing bubble gum and walking. Let's do it as the norm. Painting and talking or chewing bubblegum and walking? <laughs> talking? Yeah. Is it the norm though? Because I know a lot of people that are like, Like, it'll be very quiet. There's a reason a lot of artists like to lurk in discords and stuff. Like, I, and I know discords, like... Yeah, I'm like a massive discord user. Anybody who knows me, they know, like, my DMs are open. When you draw with DPO. So I'm, can you, was that a typo or is that an acronym that I don't know because I'm old. Just let me know, okay? Just let me know if that's just me or if that's, you know. Yeah, a lot of people, they'll just like stay quiet on Discord. Oh, DPO is another user. That's what that means. Okay. Oh, it's another person. Oh, okay. Oh, cool, Andy. So you collab with this guy named DPO. Got it. That's awesome. Okay. So now that I've got like my basic shapes here, I'm going to move in. I'm really going to go for that portrait. He draws cool stuff. Oh, awesome. Well, if Andy and Ben say that this guy draws cool stuff, he must draw cool stuff. Like that, there's just no questioning that. Uh <laughs> Ooh, let's go. Let's go before we continue with this this portrait and I go off talking about stuff. I want to go check out what everybody else is doing. Ooh. I always love your sketches so much. Wow. Ooh, you're getting there too. I love I love the flow of this one. You're doing good. 
I'll give you more time. Ooh, interesting approach. Nice. Mars heading along good too. Nice. Should I slow down? Am I going too fast, guys? Um, I don't think I am. I don't think it's too, too ahead. So, okay. I'm going to be focusing in a lot here. So, um... Oh, you are not going too slow, Andy. Take your time. There is literally zero rush. We are not ending this in one session. We are doing this for as long as it takes me to finish this session. <laughs> this, uh, this illustration. Um, so. Gonna be a while. A bit tight. <laughs> so, yeah. So for me, this is not super straightforward. So this is a three, three quarter view. I have like this kind of angle. I kind of also want to put down my, my general values maybe. General colors, sorry. Yeah, I think I might do that. Let's, let's put in this beautiful skin tone. Let's try to get it just right. I think that's a good one to put down. Yep, right there. So I'm just putting in like the kind of the mid-tone of that that skin color that I'm seeing in her. And then I can play with deepening and lightening different areas based on the reflections that I'm seeing. You like drawing anime? A lot of people like drawing anime. Yep. That is a very common... Very common one. Alright, so that color... I'm going to try to find it. It's like a... Close... You know what? I think that's fair. I think this this color is fair to put down as this one stumps me. It's like it's very it's almost satiny in certain areas. That's gonna be interesting to paint, guys. This is gonna be special, I'm telling you. Yeah, that one. Mm 
Right. So that's how I like go and I pick my my colors. I like to just compare to the reference. I like to put down strokes and try and look back and forth and see like, hey, is that the right value? Is that the right color? If it's the right color but not the right value, then you would slide it. Um, up or down and so I prefer the like the triangle here for the color wheel for the reason that it's a little bit easier and more clear where to go to change your value but you can often go like this which will get you like white or black but um, there's also like this is the mid-tone as well it's just higher in saturation so. There we go. So I'm just going to plop this down on in. And then we have the basic framework to work from for the rest of the time. We have all of our basics established and then I can color pick from my own choices, right? So that's why I'm putting importance on, on putting this down because I was, uh, I was trying to do a portrait and I was realizing there really wasn't much there for me to kind of color pick in terms of uh, colors and I don't necessarily want this thing to be black and white I, I want this to be a colored illustration at the end of it so I, I like to just do this step where I start to just compare the colors and figure it out for myself and then the rest of the time all I have to do is either change values or mess with the the color hue there's a time during this whole thing where i will just start to play with color and we'll discuss that when that time comes okay i love playing with color that's like one of the, my most favorite things to do is just like playing with color I also really like this retro music. Who's uh, who's digging it? Like, let me know. Huh. I'm I'm so digging this. I love retro wave. So, yeah, but it's also like good for focusing because I've got this event that I I do weekly called Study Hall where we like we'll just study in silence the whole time. And I put on like piano music and the first couple of weeks that I was there, I put on this like beautiful mix that I curated myself and everything. And people were like, I'm falling asleep. Like I'm failing to study because I'm falling asleep. And I was so sad, but I was also like, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so I've been in search of like what makes for a good all round uh, study experience. And, and really very often it'll be like music just good good music that doesn't have these like super high volume peaks that just kind of like coasts along um retro wave does does very nicely for that i do have to say so we're gonna warm up the shadow here because i'm not liking the purple anymore um, so I'm, yeah, at this point, I'm just going to pull on zoom in here and really get to work because I feel like I've been, I've been just kind of not procrastinating working on the portrait, but we just haven't gone in. Right. So yeah. So let's go. <laughs> Great. So I want to change kind of the. color of the shadow because it's distracting me right now. Yeah, Andy. Yeah, it was. It was. Push that out. 
Uh, I'm just kind of looking at like the face shape that I'm seeing. Trying to see where the darkest darks are. Because in order to make everything make sense, we have to have different values in the shadow area. So I want to... Establish kind of like a light in those. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, go ahead and paint it. And if you paint it, hey, if you paint that landscape that I put out there, uh, like tag me. Like if you post it on Instagram, like I'd love to see it. I, I'd love to get tagged. I love these things. Like anytime someone tags me on Instagram, it like makes my day. I was like, oh, cool. So now I'm running into my sketch is annoying me. So I'm going to lower the opacity of that sketch. Because what happens is I make a sketch and that's good. It gets stuff in, right? But then at some point I want to be able to be free of that sketch. It like drags me down at some point because I'm a much better painter than I am a drawer. And I'm, I'm working on that actively, but um, it just bothers me and I prefer to kind of get stuck in there and start painting sooner rather than later. And Fence is already like miles, miles down the road. Look at him. That's so cool. You ended up drawing the face. <gasps> Wait. You ended up drawing the face. Oh, let's see. Frank, doing good, doing good. Keep going. Good job. Okay. Awesome. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> oh, the typical, very uh, super um, modest artist that he is. Take the compliment, Benz. <laughs> For now, I have the mic and you do not, so. Oh wait, something's bothering me. There's this part of the dress that goes in. Is it? Is it here? It was bothering me that her waist was being like absolutely dwarf. Yeah, I'm sorry guys. Let me just fix that. Not dwarfed, but it looked way too like thick. You know, like dwarfs. <laughs> They're thick. <laughs> I don't know why I used it in that context, but um, okay. So the first step that I take is I'm looking at the shadow shapes, just like I did with, with the dress and everything. Um, so I'm separating this into two value groups, the lights and the darks. So this is going to look weird. Trust the process. She's got like high cheekbones. Like, I want to be her. Can I be her, please?
feel like that might be too high. I think I'm exaggerating that because I think it's beautiful. Hold on. I think it will depend on the rest of the features as I keep going. So I'm going to just give it a minute. Give it a hot minute. right now I'm cutting away at stuff just thinking of the shapes that are there you know a lot of painting is about context and sometimes when things aren't right and I don't feel like I can confidently put in the face it's because the context is wrong like there's I've put this in wrong and so I need to look at what's around something before I start laying down strokes and realize that oh I don't have enough space or oh you know such and such is wrong I can't think of an example right now yeah Andy relates there we go Andy relates good it's got like a space up here hold on just gotta look at this area like up here on her forehead and like this I'm gonna ignore some of these like little hairs that are coming in front of her face we're gonna put that in later um so right now I'm measuring here let me let me do something. I'm looking at like that piece on her forehead and it lines up kind of with the inside of the shadow. I'm making sure that this lines up very well in a straight line. And it does. Let's check the chats. Oh, there have been lots of comments. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> You're always hitting the wrong keys with these touch screens. I get you. I get you. That happens. <laughs> It happens. It just is. It just happens. Oh, we ran out of music. No. More music. Let's hit this one. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that. Okay. So you have some more retro wave for a while, and then we might switch to some lo-fi if there's still time. So some chill lo-fi. Some, some chill. <laughs>
Oh, Andy, you're using pencil measuring? That's awesome. Like, you just go like this. <laughs> Fun. So this method that I'm using is mainly, so there's like two methods in the uh, Expressive Portraits course to like lock stuff in. This one, and then there's more like of a constructive approach. I'm more using like the shadow based approach right now, which is one I haven't exclusively used in a little bit. I won't ruin the second method. I feel like, you know, go check it out because it's, it's Kinda of hard to explain. Yeah, Jonathan does like a super awesome job explaining this stuff. Um. Copy and paste. Hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm not gonna be copy and paste. <laughs> I love it. I love that you said that though. That's so funny. I feel like there is something that I am not getting. Like this. He has such a cool nose. What is... I don't know. It's meant to be lower. I think this one's gonna be lower too. I think this is what's called loop lighting. Yep. Pretty close to like Rembrandt lighting, but not quite. Not quite. And I know if any of my photographer friends are watching, they're like, I know you're so silly. They get so particular about the lighting things. It's. I'm gonna get told after this. Not Rembrandt lighting, it's such and such. Very specific name lighting. They have a name for everything, I swear. <laughs> it's so funny. angle is really interesting. The cheek is... yeah, there it is. And then it goes in right where the mouth is, like near the corner. There's this weird thing happening with her face. It's gorgeous, but... It's just different than most of the other faces that I get to draw. I love it. It's awesome. It's 
go in. So I feel like I'm not... There's some particulars in here that I'm just not immediately getting. I feel like a lot of this will end up being quite dark. It's just the highlights on the hair that are... Yeah, I'm gonna have to mess with some of the... Hey, the episode that we go in and do the hair is gonna be so fun. You guys, hair is like the... It's so fun to do. Like, I get in a hair mode. <laughs> it's really fun. And then we can, we can do this thing. Where we go, like, behind her. And on its own little lair, we go, like, you know, put, put the little curls down here because she has little chin curls. <laughs> they're not from her chin. They're from her hair. They're just the other side of, of this. Hold on. They're the other side of this here. It's just showing up over here. <laughs> it's just super cute. Uh, but I won't, I won't put that in right away. I just wanted to show, like, how I would do that because I don't want to, like, have to redefine this chin once I'm done, right? I don't want to like mess up on that very specific edge, and it's it's a hard edge too, right there. Zooming in always helps you easier. Yeah, I think just getting the context of exactly what I'm looking at will help. So again, two two colors. I've got my my base tone for her skin, and I've got my darks. And I'm going in and I'm specifically trying to make all of these shadows kind of have the simplest shape that they can have. Up in there. Oh, I'm erasing it. Got it. Shouldn't be doing that. I think that's too low, actually. Yeah, that shadow's too low. So what we can do here is, like, do ye old... Duplicate. And... Oh! <laughs> Shifty. <laughs> and then than what I did, so I'm gonna just widen it. And then I'm gonna press L for the selection tool and just click out. And I want to turn it on and off. Is that... It's better, and then I can build on that. I don't think it's perfect. But it's better. There's another shadow right here. And it's quite round. I love her lips. They're just like... There's substance, you know? She's gorgeous. Um, this, like... I'm, I'm making her smile more because I'm happy to see her. So you gotta watch out for that. Sometimes the way you're feeling creeps into the image, and that happens to me a lot. Especially, I what happens is the reference image kind of like seeps into my mind, and I start to um, either feel the way that they are expressing, or I will read into the image far too much and exaggerate certain things. And sometimes that's good, like. But for me, what I'm trying to do is focus on things being exact, right? So if I'm doing that, then I need to 
not let let either my emotions, their emotions, or, or my inspiration like change what's on there. I think. Okay, let's let's keep working because I feel like that's also too high. Like the mouth is too high by a little bit. Do that. Duplicate. Do it again. Oh my goodness. This happens every time. <laughs> I have I have problems with with remembering that keyboard shortcut. Always. I've, I always have that problem. And it's it's alright. My art is fueled by my moods, he says. Okay, cool. That's awesome. That's brilliant, actually. I love that. Actually, I'm gonna go back. Can I do that? Oh, I see what happened. Nice. We're not gonna move the nose. We're just gonna move the mouth. Thank you. Technical difficulties. Give me a moment. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of space. There we go. I'm just, I'm just looking to give myself a little bit of space because I feel like I went a little bit just by a little, and I'm, I'm really looking at like the tiniest. I think that's better. Really, a lot of the time I'm looking at like the tiniest little change. It just feels better to me. I'm not exactly sure if that's correct. Uh, never assume that you're correct. You can always change something as you're moving forward. I made her eye too small. Her eye is actually like. Again, I know I keep saying this, but dang, she's gorgeous. Like. She's got them the big eyes. That's beautiful. I love drawing people. It's some of the reason why I do so many portraits and definitely my illustration and my art in general pretty much always involve like characters and stuff. So. So now I'm putting in more subtleties and describing plane changes that are happening in the eye. Uh, 
You feel the same way with creatures? Yeah, do it. <laughs> Learn anatomy for animals. You'll love that. So if you want some really good pointers on how to uh, paint this this color skin, a uh, good uh, a good class to go um, actually go check out. Um, we're gonna double feature Jonathan in this video. Uh, you can go check out the Understanding Textures course in Schoolism, and it's seriously so good at teaching you like how to paint different materials including hair, including uh, different types of skin types. When we get into into more color for this face, it, I'm excited because I don't I don't very often get to work with this beautiful like skin type. So I'm just really excited to like really explore like how far I can push the colors and because I see purple, I see yellow i see these beautiful pinks i i just want to paint it all so i'm yeah i'm super excited <laughs> all right all right so her nose is interesting You love lions? Awesome. I want to see you paint a lion. Oh, Vans. Yeah, purple works well with darker skins. I often like to put some in there. Yes. something not quite perfect about that cheek according to moi i'm gonna be okay let's see oh, a big change good merge that down so you'll find i very often work in very few layers i i just don't like working in a ton of them like if you see my sketch is still kind of in there kind of not like we'll zoom out let's see i can at this point i think just turn off that sketch layer there's no point and i can make it maybe bring it back a little bit when we start doing like the body and the, the fabric and it'll look a little odd dude normally when i do my paintings um i have i'll be doing like i'll be bouncing around i'll be doing the body and the face and i'll just kind of you know bounce around uh but for for this specific classroom i want to do like kind of one thing at a time so i'm going to be approaching this in terms of like topics so we're gonna do fabric we're gonna do the portrait we're gonna do the rest of the body structure we're gonna do uh final details we're gonna you know the different parts of this entire process and i really want to try and push magma to its limits in terms of like how nice of an illustration can i personally make with this tool so i think it's really really cool um so i'm testing it out because i want to i want to eventually like switch to using magma like for everything that's my goal um so i'm really i want to put it through the ringer i want to see like what can i get out of this okay so
Thanks for the info. Just need to remember it with all the other creature info in my brain. You're good. You're good. Take your time. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, let's go see what everyone else is doing. Hold on. Ooh. Yeah. Ever impressed? Yeah, I had I had no doubt I was gonna be impressed coming over here. <laughs> I love your take on it. This is so cool. Whoa. Whoa. I like the way you geographically, like, so many straight lines. Whoa. This is so cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. I love the feel of this. Good job. Yep. <laughs> nice. Oh, really following the steps. Doing great. I like this, Mars. Keep going. This will be fun. <laughs> Mine looks quite dark right now, but I have literally no lights. I'm just literally focusing on my shadow shapes right now. Like, I can come in. No joke and just start putting in my lights if I want to. Um, but I kind of, I want to be controlled about it. I want to, I want to get my, I want to get my structure correct first. That's, that's what I'm trying to put out there is, for me specifically, my drawing is very important because if I don't focus on my drawing, which is my weakest point, um, it doesn't end up looking very nice. Just put simply. So I have to focus on the drawing for far longer than other people normally do. Or at least that's how I feel. <laughs> like Other people don't have to focus it as long as I do. Um, I feel like this eye not describing this eye very well, so I'm gonna go in. I love how the music is like. <laughs> yeah, we're really uh, doing gymnastics now. It's like super intense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the more I do it, I'll get faster at it. Absolutely. That's why I forced myself to do it too. Cause I know like, I'll just get better. Okay, I I don't like approaching this as like making lines to do an eye, but I do feel like there's this shadow right here that is essentially describing this a lot. I don't really want to put in the iris yet though, so I'm just gonna hold back on that. And yeah, it's gonna look creepy because I don't have the eyes in yet. You should have seen the, the portrait I did recently of Elijah Wood. Like if you go see it, <laughs> hold on. You go to my art space, you go to like time-lapse videos, you go here, right? I have the eyes not in there for so long. Some people were like, dude, you're creeping me out. Like, can you not? <laughs> I, I don't care. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like I'm trying to get the shapes right. I'm trying to get the geometry of that face correct. And that's like the thing that's going to make it read as that person. I'm trying to nail what's called likeness. And that is in your drawing. It's in your shadow shapes. So for some people, it's not important, right? And you don't you don't need to, especially if you're starting out, like do not fuss, right? But for me, like I'm really, I want to be good at that. I don't know why. To be clear, I have no idea why I want to be good at it, but I just want to be good at it. It makes me happy. There's this little shadow coming on the other side of her nose that shows like the shape of where the mouth is um, that I just want to capture. Always looks like someone else. Yep. Well, here's the secret. Shadow shapes. I promise you that's what it is. Shadow shapes.
So this whole area kind of... It's kind of a little bit darker. So let me just show that flame change. Like that. I know I'm making her look a little bit weird. And it's gonna look weird for a while. Buckle up. But if I do this correctly, which I'm fairly confident I'll be able to do, when I start putting in uh the some of the details that make this really work together, it will immediately just start to look like her. So I'll just be patient with me and we will get there. We will indeed get there. <laughs> It's got like this under eye shadow area. You know how some women they'll put on makeup, they'll like put it under their eye. I can't. It has that feel where there's like I just uh, immediately lost the music, <laughs> and that's all right. I think that's a good cue. That's a good cue because it's exactly 6 p.m., which is the time that unfortunately is the end <laughs> of the stream. But if you've had a good time, please do let me know. If you want more of these, let me know that too. And if you appreciated my in-detail rambling about just basic beginner ways to start your canvas, let me know that too. But with that being said, I really enjoyed my time streaming here today, and please do join me in two weeks. We will be continuing this portrait, and hopefully we can take it to a spot that is nice and comfortable and get moving along with fabric and the rest of the body and the rest of the illustration. So I, my friends, will see you then. <laughs>